participate in the development of the Transfigured Project, I couldn't imagine how challenging it would be to select excerpts to illustrate the abundant and revolutionary musical life of Schoenberg. How could one summarize in a single evening the works of a composer who, by himself, marked the romantic and post-romantic styles, up to creating a new language, breaking with all tradition, 12-tone technique, leaving an indelible imprint in the history of music? The imperatives linked to the stage, the fruitful collaboration with Bertrand Bonello, and the central presence of David Caduce guided our musical choices, forming a chronological framework emphasizing the contrast between prominent symphonic pieces like Transfigured Night, Peleus at Melisande, or the five pieces for orchestra, a pivot of orchestral stylistic rupture, vocal music exploring the realms of opera and lead, the unique style of Piero Lunaire, piano music, and choral pieces, whose writing invokes the great masters of the past. Vocal music alone covers almost the entirety of Schoenberg's first 22 opuses, and naturally had to be included in the program. Sarah Aristidou's voice is utilized in its most varied registers, moving from the Sprechgesang, spoken singing, of Piero Lunaire, to the dramatic and highly demanding lines of the final scene of Erwartung, and then blending into the intimacy of the three leader with piano. Although the masterpiece Moses on Aaron could not be included in the project, Schoenberg's intellectual and spiritual journey in an unstable Germany is also evident in his choral music, notably in pieces like Frieda auf Erden and Kol Nidre. Frieda auf Erden, this illusion for mixed choir, as Schoenberg liked to define it, whose execution difficulty reflects the challenging journey of mankind on earth, offers us a vision of the ideal of peace confronted with the impossible harmony among humans. In this world where current events constantly bring us back to the dream of universal harmony, how can one not acknowledge, once again, the unfailing modernity of this exceptional composer? I played a lot of piano as a child, and one day, my teacher told me, we are going to study Schoenberg's piano pieces. You might not like them, but you will play them well. So I developed an early closeness to his music. This brought me luck. A few years later, I encountered Schoenberg in the music option of my final exams, probably thanks to him. As an adult, I lost touch with the classical repertoire, but the desire to return to these early loves lingered. With Olivier Monté, we had once considered a Debussy's Peleas et Melisande project for the Opéra Comique. When he became the head of the Philharmonie de Paris, the idea of staging an opera evolved into the dream of a transversal show, presenting the venue differently and experiencing music in a less segmented way than traditional concerts. Olivier asked me about my musical journey and simply said, well, there you have it, Schoenberg. Then, everything was left to be imagined. For me, Schoenberg is a great romantic. This is obvious in his early post-Mahler works, like Transfigured Night or Peleus et Melisande, and even in his later atonal and 12-tone pieces. I disagree with the mathematical or cold view many have of his music. He is a great inventor of forms, probably the one who most revolutionized musical composition at the start of the century even if it meant confusion and isolation. But the most sophisticated invention does not preclude emotion. For now, my works are denied the favor of the masses. They will more easily reach individuals, he wrote to Kandinsky in 1909. Transfigured is a hybrid show, with a script less dramaturgy, more sensory than traditionally narrative. Musically, this dramaturgy was constructed chronologically, or almost, to make Schoenberg's thought and musical exploration over the years perceptible to the audience, to better understand and feel his own chronology, his path, and then the desire to resonate all this with the political chaos that upended his life as an artist and man, namely the rise of Nazism, which will appear in the show with the leader composed in 1933, clearly showing Schoenberg's anxiety. And here, I abandon hope for understanding. It was a dream. He wrote to Kandinsky as early as 1923. With conductor Ariane Matiak and pianist David Kaduch, we will emphasize contrasts while following this historical thread. We will begin with the chamber ensemble of Transfigured Night, an expression of intimacy, naturally followed by the grand orchestra of Peleus, pushing post-romantic language to its limits. Echoing Maeterlinck's text and symbolism, it's also a time when I want to involve actors on stage and in video leading to a true silent opera. 
Then comes the break, with the atonal world opened by the piano pieces Op 11. The challenge will then be to give a sensible evidence to this intellectual revolution by associating notes with words and Schoenberg's paintings. These paintings, dark and pessimistic, visually respond to his music and are an essential counterpart to understanding the composer. I envision a kind of pendulum between moments where concrete dramaturgy is reincarnated through actors and video. Frida auf Erden, certain orchestral pieces op 16, Erwartung, and times of distance and relative abstraction, the six piano pieces op 19. Similarly, the convulsions of the century break through with Berlin Expressionism, prefigured even before the war with Piero Lunaire, which responds to the invention of 12-tone technique and its pure mathematical poetry, with the prelude of the piano suite, Op 25. The connection between Schoenberg's work and the historical, as well as intimate devastations accompanying the rise of Nazism, is notably made through Charlotte Barat's book, Dreaming Under the Third Reich. A journalist and close friend of Hannah Arendt, she collected, before fleeing Germany on the eve of the war, the dreams of her compatriots between 1933 and 1939, illustrating the invasion of terror into their deepest selves, as well as the subtle duality between psychological resistance and the internalization of totalitarian norms. How fear can colonize the subconscious. The narration of these dreams by actors, as well as by words and projected images, corresponds with the 1942 Piano Concerto and the 1938 Kol Nidre. The final minutes of the show visually and musically translate the unfolding catastrophe and the spiritual power that overcomes it.